Hello and welcome. So you can see that a latch is either latched or it's unlatched. And you've probably encountered these before. So why should it be any different with an electronic circuit? Simply has two states. Okay, so there is a latch on the bottom left hand corner that we did in digital one. It's just called a set reset latch. When it's set, the Q is a one. When it's reset, we put a one on the reset pin, R, which makes the Q a zero. And we've just redrawn it into its asynchronous equivalent using the Y output as the Q. It's the same circuit. You can check the wire for wire. Identical circuit, just drawn a slightly different way. And so we see that latches are, in fact, just simple asynchronous circuits. So once we accept that the latch is a building block, all we have to do is to find out what to put, what functions to put on the R and the S to implement a more complicated asynchronous circuit. So here we've drawn our latch with our asynchronous circuit and we've worked out what the Y is going to be in terms of the S, the R, and the little Y. If you have a trouble following that or don't, some steps are missing, you can go back and watch my video on De Morgan's theorem. Now, we said that we can't have both R and S equal to 1 because if that happens, then both the Q and the Q bar will be 0 and the latch will not be in either the set or reset condition, which means that the Q and the Q bar have to have opposite states. So this is an un a forbidden condition to have both R and S as a 1. And if we want to specify that mathematically, we simply say that S and R is equal to 0. And if we check that, we get our functions for S and R, and we find that they're equal to 0 when anded together, then we sure we have a stable circuit, and the unrighteous condition will not occur. Now, if we have SR0, which means we have a stable circuit, we can simplify this function even further. And there you see the process which we can do to simplify it. And we simply end up with S or R bar Y. Now, we've drawn a transition table at the bottom and we've written the original function. And we're just going to plot it on the... Transition table. And when we do that, we end up with that transition table. So what do we do next? Well, we realize that if we use the excitation table, which we derived in the uh, earlier page, everything is going to indicate that the condition... 1, 1, or having S and R both 1, does not occur in the excitation table. There is no role where 1, S and R can both be 1, because as you can see, every single row of the excitation table has a 0 in it, either for the S or the R. So we can be assured that that um, column never occurs in practice. I.e., so we could either have ones or zeros in there. It wouldn't make any difference. If we plotted the simplified function, we would have a one in there, but it wouldn't matter because that column is never executed in a stable system. All right, so now we've drawn a NAND latch. Uh, all we've done is replace the NOR gates with NAND and switch the... S and the R, and over on the right side, we see that the equivalent circuit is exactly the same, 
but when we try now to compute the function, it's much easier. Again, if you don't see how we can get the S bar or RY, simply go and watch my lecture on De Morgan's simplification. It's a very well lecture. It's very popular. It's watched all the time. And you'll quickly be able to follow how we can do that De Morgan simplification. Now, the stability condition with the NAND latch is the same, except that now, because the NAND is the opposite of the NOR, we can't have both S and R being equal to 1, because if both S and R are equal to 1, sorry, equal to 0, if both S and R are equal to 0, then both Q and Q bar will be equal to 1. So uh, make sure you follow that and understand why. Because um, if we have zeros on the S and the R, that forces those NAND gates to have a 1 output. So both the Q and the Q bar will be 1. So we can specify that again mathematically by saying that S bar ended with R bar is equal to 0. And that condition will be satisfied. As long as our functions for S and 0, when we work them out, we get a 0 there. Our, um, our circuit is stable and the condition is satisfied. So there is our transition table, uh, which we have just produced using the y equal to s bar or ry. And the uh, row, sorry, the column that never happens in this uh, situation is where we have two zeros on both s and r at the same time. So that column will never occur in a stable circuit. All right, so what's the use of all of this? Well, we want to be able to implement transition tables, any type of transition table. Um, so we just pick a transition table at random. And here's a simple transition table. And we want to implement an asynchronous circuit that uses latches to cause this transition table to be correct. And we always go with the NOR approach, which means we use that NOR excitation table. And we use that NOR excitation table with the, with the um, transition table to get a function for S and R using simple Carnot maps. Okay, can you see how we have filled out the first two? This is most important. So let's move the arrow up there to show. We are looking here at the very first square. Now the inside the square where I'm pointing to, we have a zero. That means that big Y is a zero. Remember what is inside the squares is big Y. Now on the outside, little Y is all also a zero. So over here we have little Y is zero going to big Y is zero, which means that we have to have a zero on the S and an X on the R. So we put a zero in that square for the S uh, Carnot map and an X in the square for the R Carnot map. So let's fill the whole thing out now. And once again, we'll just take an example to show you how it's done. Okay, so in case you didn't catch that, uh, let's look here now at this bottom square. We have a small Y1 going to a big Y1 because the big Y is inside of the square. And where does the small Y1 go to the big Y1? Small Y1 goes to big Y1, which means we have to have an X in the same square on the S map and a zero in the same square of the 
arm up. Okay, got it? So you should be able to follow through and see how we got all of those. Now all we have to do now is circle them in the usual way to uh, find out how to simplify. So we, we circle our groups just as we did in Digital One. There's other videos to show you how to do that on Karno Map Simplification. And once we've done that, we get our simplified functions for S and R. Now remember the latch is a standard drawing. There is the latch. You just draw the latch the same way all the time. So the only thing we have to decide now is how to put in the S and the R. And that's easy once we know the functions. Here's how we do it. We just draw uh, our AND gate for the, uh, the S. And uh, we only need one inverter on the X1 line for the R. So we're good to go. Now, to do the uh, function, to do the transition table with... Uh, NAND gates, if we want some NAND gates in there instead of, of, of NOR, we don't have to go back and do anything over again. We can use those same S and R functions to quickly give us a NAND situation. So the procedure is even if you wanted a NAND situation from the start, you simply work out the NOR situation and the NAND situation becomes a piece of cake. So I've just copied back the S and R functions from the NOR situation here. And uh, we note that when we AND the S and the R functions together, we get a zero. And I've just filled in the rules there from Digital One to show you how our S ANDed with R gives a zero. So that proves that this circuit is a stable circuit. We, don't, we do that with the NOR. Now what are we going to do? Well, we are going to... Simply complement the S and the R for the NAND situation. So the S and the R now when we're dealing with NAND gates are the S and the R complemented. So we've complemented the S from the NOR section. And from the NOR section we've complemented the R. And we're good to go. So we draw our NAND gate. And uh, as you can see, we have completed our function there. And we are actually done. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.